Hello, I'm Grant from Makers Vlog and today, what are 1G, 3G, 4G, all that? What are they? What do they actually mean um, for you as the person who uses them? Well, a common misconception is that they mean gigahertz, that, it's, that that's the, it is the frequency that is being used. So 1G would use 1 gigahertz and 2G would use 2 gigahertz. It's not the case. It stands for generation. So it's first generation mobile communications, second generation mobile communications, etc. Now, first generation mobile communications wasn't actually called 1G when it was created because they didn't think that far ahead. It was only retroactively called 1G. Now, all these are are a group of standards. So they're not a technology in of themselves. So if your phone, um, you buy it and it says that it is a 4G phone, it means it's 4G compliant. It is capable of the speeds that it is required to be labeled as 4G. There are other standards within that, which are communication standards and technology standards, which then enable the communication. Sound confusing? Well, bear with me. So 1G or first generation, was the first mobile phone communication technology that was made. So if you remember the big brick phones, if you remember them, you're older than me, but the big brick phones with the big antennas, they were first generation. They were capable of voice communication. They were analog, they were not digital. So it was just the uh, analog. So like me speaking now, it's, it's a wave. It's not digital, it's not ones and zeros. The frequency range for it was 150 to 900 uh, megahertz. That was the the space on the spectrum that they were allocated and allowed to use. And it's not secure, it was not encrypted. Anyone could capture that traffic and listen to it. It was basically a glorified two-way radio at the time. Moving on a bit, we got 2G, second generation. A lot of people also knew this as GSM, uh, General Service Mobile, I believe. It had voice. It was also the first one to have SMS, short messaging services, texts, essentially. Also, a fun fact, if you ever remember the old um, ringtone that sort of came as default, that was uh, da -da 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 that, that is SMS in Morse code. And that, that's what that original text message uh, receive tone used to be. In later generations of, of 2G, it was still 2G, but it had other things like uh, 2G.5, 2G.9 and all that. It then got its first data transmission system and this was GPRS. It was capable of a theoretical um, transmission speed of 50 kilobits per second. So not that fast. And that was theoretical. In practice, it was usually a hell of a lot less than that. Uh, GPRS stands for General Packet Radio Service. I have a fuck ton of notes on this one, it's a big topic. Then later on that was superseded by EDGE, which is Enhanced Data Rates for GSM Evolution. How they came up with that name, I don't know. And it had a theoretical speed of one megabits per second. Again, theoretical. In practice, it was a lot less than that. Some of you may still remember that. I remember GPRS because as soon as you got the wee node saying that you're on GPS, GPRS instead of Edge or instead of 3G, you couldn't get on the internet. It was just too slow. It was also the first one to be secure. It was encrypted end to end in both voice and SMS. So the text messaging services were, were encrypted um, between travel. The frequency allocation also changed. They got 380 uh, megahertz through to 1,900 megahertz or 1.9 gigahertz, depending on how you want to look at it. Um, this frequency change allowed them to do um, data communications because the higher frequency ranges, they were allowed bigger bandwidth. So they were able to take up larger chunks of the spectrum for a single communication or multiple communications in this case. And that allowed them to send data. That was, that was what allowed them to do it, was being uh, allocated that larger bandwidth. Third generation, a lot of you will probably remember. Um, it wasn't that long ago in the grand scheme of things. A key thing though to be, this was the first one that made it a compliancy test. The other ones were just sort of, they were called 2G because that's what they were. Whenever 3G came out, 
um, there were communication standard authorities who said in order for your devices to be called 3G and to say that they're allowed 3G, they need to make certain criteria. They need to be able to transmit at these speeds for you to be allowed to call it 3G. That speed was 200 kilobits per second. So 0 0.2 megabits per second peak. And the peak is the key. Because even though here, that's one megabits per second, that is in theory on edge is faster than what the minimum requirement for 3G is. But as I said, edge was theoretical of one megabit per second. Out in the wild, you probably maybe got GPRS's full speed about 50 kilobits per second in and around. Maybe a bit higher than that if you're really close to a repeater. With the 3G standard, they said, no, you must get minimum. At any given time, if you're connected to 3G, your minimum speed must be 200 kilobits per second. And that was the key distinguishing feature. The uh, first sort of standards that came out was U UMTS, which is Universal Mobile Telecommunications Service. And it had a theoretical speed of 56 megabits per second. It was also um, closer to this um, out in the field. It wasn't quite as wild as the Edge or GPRS where they said, yes, in ideal circumstances you can get this, but in reality you won't. The UMTS was actually fairly close to the mark. You could get um, quite close to that. And the other standard uh, was CDMA 2000, which was mainly used in uh, South America. And it is Code Division Multiple Access uh, 2000, and it was just a, another standard of communications. So the CDMA 2000, UMTS, GPRS, EDGE, all of these are standards within the generational standard. They are um, technologies and software that allow the communication of these uh, data packets at the set speeds. The 3G and 2G and 4G are all just overarching those. So they are saying, okay, if you want to be called 4G, you need to meet these criteria. These companies create these technologies. So sake of argument, UMTS, which meets that criteria and they go to the governing body and say, okay, here's the speeds that we can get. We want this to be labeled as 3G. And so all of these sort of fall under 3G. And as you, the consumer, if you're buying a phone, all you need to know is, oh, it's 3G compatible, so I'll get those speeds. It makes it easier for the consumer just to go and buy a device and know roughly, yes, that's going to be fast or no, it isn't. Because if they had all of these um, sub standards, so GPRS, Edge, UMTS, on a phone, it could get very confusing. You would look at a phone and go, okay, it's capable of UMTS. What, what does that mean? Is, is that fast? Is it not? I don't know. So the 3G standards and 4G standards and all that were made to th make things easier for you, the consumer. Frequency ranges also changed. Um, it had it moved up in frequency, so it's 800 to 2,100 megahertz or 800 megahertz to 2.1 gigahertz. And the same uh, thing happened where they got more bandwidth on the higher frequencies, so they were able to transmit that, that data. Also, technology got better, so the communication chips and hardware got better, and that also enabled the uh, higher rates of communication. 4G. To be 4G compliant, it had to be um, 100 megabits per second or 1 gigabits per second depending on where you are. So the 100 megabits per second is for a moving uh, device. So in a train, in a car, whatever, you have to be able to get 100 megabits per second. And if you're stationary, one gigabit per second. Now, you might be thinking, I don't get one gig per second on my mobile phone. And you would be right. The standard, whenever it was created, it was very optimistic. And none of the devices um, could actually reach this in real world scenarios. So they sort of took it as, well, okay, it's close enough. Um, the realistic speeds are in and around 50-ish, depending on where you are. And the technology is advanced now to the point where you, you, can, you can get one gigabit if you're really lucky, but it's not that likely. So the 4G standard, the authority that made the 4G standard, whenever all these companies came to them and says, well, we are much faster than 3G, but... We can't, uh, we can't get up to the one gig um, specification that you want. And so the authority went, well, okay, you can call it 4G anyway. 
and sort of just took it as uh, on the head that okay well 4G is faster we haven't actually documented that um, you can get these speeds with 4G's we haven't told the public that so okay we'll just we'll just accept that and we'll say that it's faster the standards for it were uh, mobile WiMAX and LTE uh, these standards similar to UMTS and CDMA these two uh, just technologies and companies that made 4G possible but 4G had a big deviation from third generation and that was the frequency domain equalization FDE so 3G used a spread spectrum technology is what they called it and I always try and keep these videos simple so I'm not going to go into what that is just accept that that is what 3G used it used a spread spectrum technology to enable its communication to be much faster than 2G 4G uh, then went on to frequency domain equalization which is the same thing that 5G is going to be using or similar anyway and it allowed for a much uh, faster data rate and with this the technology also got better and a key thing happened and that's this MIMO which is an antenna system multiple input multiple output now if you have a Wi-Fi um, hub in your house which I'm sure most people do you will have seen these antennas it's the antennas that are on them it's the same technology and all that means is it can receive a lot of data from ones uh, from multiple sources and it can output multiple data to multiple sources it makes the speed of communication a hell of a lot faster because one antenna can do the job of several so if you see the antennas um, or the mass the uh, 4g towers you'll see that they have a sort of flat box um, system on them and they'll have several of them these are multiple input multiple output antennas and they enable the fast communication and data communication that we have and it also takes in um, your voice and uh, messaging so some people think 4G oh that's data and no it's the standard for data but all of your mobile communications still go through these towers they're just dealt with differently now I haven't got 5G up here because 5G takes a bit of a departure and that's other reasons as to why it's so much faster so I'm going to do another video explaining why 5G is a hell of a lot faster. So if you want to see that, um, subscribe and all that good stuff. I'll be putting it out um, after this one. So if you've liked, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, I'll see you later.